Hello, this is Monsi from Monsi Makes, and today I'm watercoloring small images with Distress Ink Reinkers. As many of you who've been following me know, Distress Ink Reinkers are my favorite watercoloring medium, and the reason for that is that they just blend easily, they are super vibrant, and they allow me to mix and match colors. Um, they go a really long way. One tiny drop of one color lasts forever. So I have this uh, palette from Tim Holtz, the alcohol ink and distress ink reinker uh, palette. I have both. And I usually put one drop of ink in one of those wells and that lasts me at least um, seven to eight paintings that are this size if the images are this small. So you don't need a lot, it goes a long way. And um, they're just super vibrant, so I love using them. For this particular painting, now this is a, an adorable stamp from the Colorado Craft Company. Uh, they started producing this series uh, that was illustrated by Anita Jerram. And the last time I did a painting with critters, I was super afraid because I'd never painted animals before. I didn't care for painting animals. I was super scared of painting fur. I didn't, you know, there are people who make amazing things when they take out their watercolors and their uh, alcohol ink markers to paint animals. I am not one of them. So my cop out was giving them clothes. That was the real reason why my creatures in the previous release had clothes and why they have clothes again. <laughs> it's, it's, a, uh, it's the doing it afraid part of me and I've devised a way to do it afraid but still enjoy it. So I'm using uh, Princeton brushes here. The biggest brush that I'm using is a two size two round brush and I have a size one round brush and then I will also be using what is called a daughter brush which is basically a super fine tip that you need for details. As with all my watercolor paintings, I try to paint the area that I'm painting uh, that I want the color in first with just water. And when I paint it with just water, what happens is that it creates um, a perimeter within which that ink, that pigment will stay contained. So I go in, I paint with just water and then I put a micro drop of the color in. And I also, in using my palette, mix and match colors. So I didn't use a lot of different colors in this particular painting. It's just, I used Kish Flamingo, I used Wild Honey, Broken China, Speckled Egg, and then I had some um, black and some gray in my paint palette from another painting from earlier that hadn't dried up. I, it, you know, it takes a while for those, those inks never dry up, even in the wells. So, and it takes a while for me to use them up. So I just went back to my palette and picked up some of the greens and grays and blacks that I already had in it. And uh, essentially just, this is my first layer. Each of my watercolor paintings is usually about three to four layers. My first layer is just painting with water, dropping in some color to essentially set the scene, so to speak. And uh, that's not when I'm worrying about details. I'm just kind of making sure I have some sweet spots or highlight areas and I have some uh, deeper colors towards the edges of whatever the object is, whether it's a dress, um, a stroller, the wheels, anything, that the tails, it's just the color is being dropped into the perimeter of the images that have been stamped. And I use Gina Kay's Warm Glow Amalgam Ink to stamp the image, which I love, uh, because I'm able to see the image, but it doesn't get in the way of the final image. It looks like a no-line image. Now you saw the camera angle change. What happened here is that I took a break. So after about 45 minutes to an hour of painting, I usually take a break because my neck and my shoulders, they start hurting. And I didn't have this piece propped up. So I'm using a postcard from Strathmore Artist Cards uh, or Artist Papers, I think that's the brand name, it's Strathmore. Uh, they sell these postcards that are in watercolor paper and I just buy them um, so that, you know, when I make a painting, it's, it's a ready-made postcard, I'm able to mail it out. Uh, and I just taped that with some washi tape onto a white piece of paper on my table. And so I was bending down, which is why I needed to take a break. That was the number one reason. Number two reason is that my first layer wasn't completely dry for me to go in with my second layer of more saturated color. So this allowed me, that one hour break when I was folding laundry allowed me to rest my muscles, to regroup in my head, and to come back with a fresh perspective uh, with my painting, the first layer being completely dry so I could go in with the second layer. Now in the second layer, what I do is usually add another color to my original color. So for example, with the wild honey, the dress for the mom, the first layer was wild honey, but then the second layer I added a little bit 
of red. You can use any red. You can use an orange even. Just a deeper shade from the same color family, so to speak. So with the Kish Flamingo, you add a picked raspberry and you'll get a deeper, darker shade of pink. Same thing with your blues. If you do a broken china, you could add a mermaid lagoon or even, you know, um, faded jeans or something like that. So a darker blue to accentuate the highlights. And you'll see me jumping around this painting quite a bit. And the reason for that is that when I do a second layer on something, I want that second layer to completely dry up before I do a third layer. So I moved on from the characters after I had added the second layer of color onto the characters. I moved on to you know creating the background. And that's where I'm using the speckled egg for the sky. I didn't have a scene in mind until I started doing the speckled egg. I could have left the entire background white. Would have been much easier, but for some reason I wanted to create a scene. So I did the speckled egg. Now that's going to take about 10 minutes to completely dry up without using a heat gun. So in the meantime, I went back into my characters and started adding details. This is when I use a dark brown. You can use gathered twigs or you can use a black. Just make sure it's not uh, just a vivid, rich black if you're trying to go for a no line effect. And if you have mistakes like where I did on the nose, I put too many dots, just use some water, dilute it, you know, it'll take care of it. So don't freak out. It's just watercolor. It's just paper. <laughs> and you're just having fun. Remember that. That's the biggest thing. So I'm just going in now with my uh, number one brush and my dotting brush to add details to some parts of the character's faces and arms, their bodies. And this is kind of the point where I'm defining them a bit more. And I'm not using a magnifying glass for this bit. I usually take out my magnifying glass when I am doing the last detail adding with my color pencils. And you'll see that in a minute. But for this stage, I'm just using my dotting brush and just adding some more details so you can see the features kind of uh, become more apparent with the addition of some more Kish Flamingo and some darker black areas that are blending in so that they look like a dark gray. And again, jumping back to the background now because I know that my speckled egg blue is dry and I can go and make a rainbow with the other colors that were in my palette. So again, mixing colors, I didn't have any green out, but you know, the blue and the yellow, they made green. And um, So just have fun with playing your, you know, mixing your colors and playing with them on your palette too. Uh, you don't have to use the pure colors as is. You can always mix and create new shades. When I made the rainbow, I decided to have the girl, instead of pulling at her mom's dress, uh, plucking a flower and giving it to the baby. So that's kind of the details that you can add and make it your own painting. You know, there, there are, of course, these illustrations are beautiful as is, but you can add more details and you can make it your own. You can do your own storytelling. And so again, I go back, I'm letting the rainbow dry and going back and adding some more details with my dotting brush um, now that parts of the characters are dry. Just adding shades and uh, the shaded area. So the darker areas are basically, again, a darker shade of the blue as in the stroller mixed with a little bit of gray. Uh, now I'm going into the wheels and the same thing, just adding a little bit of gray in some parts. So you'll notice that the darker areas are usually towards the perimeter. So I pick one edge of the stamped image and I put the darker color there and blend it towards the inside. And that's what creates that um, illusion of depth. I am not thinking about where, you know, the sunlight is hitting them and all of that stuff. I'm just kind of going uh, consistently from one area towards the perimeter, blending inwards. And that kind of works for me. So you can get into people who actually study these things, um, take the time to do that. I applaud them. I don't have the patience to do it. I'm more of an intuitive artist. So I just kind of go with the flow and um, enjoy the process and get it done without worrying about the technical aspects of it. But if you were to study where the sunlight is coming from and pick highlight areas and darker areas that way, you know, do your thing, do what makes you happy, totally go for it. And again, you see uh, the angle switch. This was when I took a break from it completely for about three hours and I went and I, you know, just did housework, just sat in the sun, doodled, did something else because it gets, you know, you have to listen to your body. That's uh, the number one tip that I can give you for watercoloring, especially with, you know, small images, whether or not you're using distress inkers, uh, re-inkers or not, 
the number one tip is listen to your body and honor it. If you are feeling that stress in your neck, in your shoulders, I know it's hard to tear yourself away from a project when you're, you know, so deeply involved in it and you're in the middle of it, especially when it comes to a watercolor painting. But if you're not listening to your body and you're letting that pain kind of stay there uh, and your shoulders are tightening up, your neck is feeling stiffened, it will come through in your painting. I guarantee you that. It's, you know, it, it transfers. We transfer our emotions into our work. And um, I have learned, I have forced myself to stop because I want to enjoy the process. I want the process to be joyful to me, um, to make me happy and not stress me out. And if I'm stressing out because of that pain, I am not giving the product my best shot. I'm not giving this painting the love it deserves. And color penciling in takes a while. I'm using a magnifying lens and I am coloring in all those nooks and little crannies that Kathy Rakusen always says, you know, fill them up because it does make a huge difference. And, uh, you know, adding all the details with my uh, micro, with, with my pens now, with my micron pens, and my glitter pens, and my souffle pens, and my glaze pens, you know, all of that takes a while. So take a break as, you, as your body tells you to take a break and enjoy this process. This is a painting you know, that whether or not you mail this to someone, that's what I was thinking the whole time, whether or not I mail this postcard to someone, the fact that I spent the time to actually give it the details I wanted to give it, uh, that's what brings me joy. So the end result, you can see that love, you can see that happiness, you can see the joy I brought into the painting because I was happy painting it throughout. So I hope that this helps you understand my process, how long it takes to make a painting like this, and uh, that you've got some tips on how to use Distress Ink Reinkers. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. I'm always happy to answer um, to the best of my ability. And I hope you'll go check out these stamps from the Colorado Craft Company. They are an absolute joy to paint. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.